well-rounded careers. Um, why don't we start with how each of you booked your first job in video games? It, it really was simple. I it was an audition. Um, <laughs> from for, where? For, for motion capture. Okay. Uh, uh, for motion capture or for voiceover. Either. Both were auditions, and I didn't see them any differently. Uh, the, one of the first things I ever did, voiceover wise, was uh, actually for television, and it was a guest star appearance that was all voice and only voice in Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Yeah. And it was called The Sound of Her Voice, and it was a, a, a guest star role. And interestingly enough, the role was for a middle-aged white, and it was very specific, a middle-aged Caucasian Starfleet officer named Lisa Cusack. So when I walked into the audition, I was the only black woman and I was the only younger black woman. And I kept thinking, well, this, this is not gonna be my job. This is, I, I'm, I'm not gonna get this. There are women that probably have the voice to go with the body of what they look like. And so when I walked into the audition, Rick Colby, who is the director of the, Star, uh, of the uh, Star Trek franchise, was actually there, and he actually directed us. And his direction was so clear about what he was looking for that you have to then, at that point, recognize that you're an empty vessel. You're no one and you're everyone. And so when I went in, it was about playing the reality, the emotional transparency, the fear, the joy, everything that came through the lines, take ownership of it, and then the nothing then becomes something. And I ended up booking it. So it was just simply auditioning and letting go of everything to know that you are everything and at the same time you are nothing, which means that you're in the perfect space for possibility. Uh, you'll have to forgive me, I'm at the tail end of a thing. Three days ago I sounded like Beric Dondarrion, it was terrible. Um, <laughs> is that a bad thing? It's a great thing. Hello. Uh, so in a past life I was a corporate shill. Um, I worked in the Silicon Valley for 10 years. I super hated my life and um, I went on a trip with my now husband and we were talking about dream jobs and I was like, man, I've always wanted to be on The Simpsons, but mm, you probably just gotta live in Hollywood. I, I didn't even know it was called Voice Over. And two weeks after we got home from that trip, I was getting ready for work, one of those soul-sucking mornings, and Nancy Cartwright, who of course is Bart Simpson, was on the radio to promote The Simpsons movie and she was like, you guys in the San Francisco area, you're so lucky you have one of the greatest voiceover schools in the country in Sausalito, and I was like, ring, ring, hello. <laughs> um, so I started taking classes that week. Uh, two years later, I was able to sign with Dean Pinero, who uh, at the time was at Abrams, and um, quit my hellish job and moved to LA. Um, but before I moved to LA, I had also signed with a San Francisco agent, and my first, second audition, I think, was for a game called The Walking Dead. And uh, it was this, this scrappy little company called Telltale, and it was all narrative choices and everything and there was this Belgian woman, this middle-aged Belgian woman, and I was like, sure, I'll learn Belgian, why not? <laughs> so I went online and I found this amazing website called the International Dialects of English Archive, please write it down. University of Kansas. University of Kansas, they accept donations. And uh, I studied Belgian um, for two days before I had to turn in this audition and I Listen, I crushed it, I'm just gonna say. <laughs> um, but that was my first job, that was my first video game job. Uh, and I ended up doing nine characters throughout that series and because of working on that game and nailing that accent, which Sean Vanneman, who was the writer of the game, had written based on a person that he knew growing up, he then left Telltale, started Campo Santo, wrote Firewatch and called me for it because of the Belgian lady. That's IDEA, it's I-D-E-A, it's at the University of Kansas, yeah. and um, a fantastic uh, accent resource. Um, I'm gonna go way back. <laughs> um, so just like you guys, I, I, you know, when I first moved to LA, typical sort of Asian parents, when you say I wanna be an artist, they say, you know, they hear um, prostitute. Um, <laughs> So, <laughs> my brother's a molecular geneticist, my sister's a pediatrician, and a third child is a hit hooker <laughs> in LA. So, so I was like, great. Um, 
so I just, <laughs> so I was sitting in my um, ap crappy apartment on Las Palmas, and I um, was watching a television show, at, at, uh, the news, because I had no cable, and I heard gunshots, and I was like, oh, that's outside my window. Um, but anyway, I, j I, just, I remember just literally opening up Dramalog, and I saw Church of Scientology. I was like, what's that? <laughs> and it was like panelists, and it was like Nancy Cartwright, SBV, and blah, blah, blah. I was like, that sounds great. So I just showed up to this panel, and um, being the non-aggressive woman that I am, um, I went up to, I said, I said hi to Nancy, and I said hi to Vic Sutton, and I said, hi, um, I, I'm a no one, but I, and he goes, you're not a no one. He's like, you came up to me, you, you were brave enough to come up to me and have a conversation with me. So I sat with him, and um, they signed me commercially, and he said, I think the voiceover department would be really interested in you. And at that time, he already was talking about diversity and, and all of that. So long story short, I also played the Chinese zither. I had gone to the Conservatory of Music in San Francisco. I, was, I grew up in San Francisco. I'm originally from Singapore. And when I first came here, I used to talk like this, you know? <laughs> and people were like, what? And, um, and so I started talking like this because I thought this would be better. <laughs> people were like, are you all right? And then, um, <laughs> and then I started getting bullied by girls. So I was like, okay, I'll just try talking like this. And so I just learned that, I think, that sometimes your 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 work sometimes what you're most embarrassed about can sometimes be your biggest asset, right? When I've spoken to kids in Kentucky or where out wherever else, um, I'm writing a, um, a, um, a book now, sort of like a modern day's travels with Charlie, and and um, I raised some money to go to Appalachia and to see them just and to say just because you've grown up with all these hurts, just I was like, that is what's gonna feed you. If you're the class clown, you might end up in Mad TV. You know what I mean? Like if you're, you know, if you have all this pain, you might end up winning an Oscar, you know, to use what you have, to not apologize for who you are. So long story short, amen. And so um, that helps. And um, and so anyway, um, the Cynthia McLean and Marianne Lynn Lord over at SBV, um, came to one of my my music shows, and they're like, we can only stay for a couple of songs. I was I, I was like, okay, that's fine. So I played the zither and I sang, and they stayed through the whole thing. So they're like, we want to sign you. So they were there for four hours, and um, I auditioned for Colette Sunderman on the phone, and um, so I booked my first Scooby Doo job, <laughs> um, and then I was sent out to Hannah Hannah Barbera, and um, I booked my first pilot. So yeah, I guess I would say to you guys just doing exactly what you're doing is is awesome that you don't have to be a somebody to be a somebody i think it's like you are you are enough already and that what you're doing right now right here and showing up and taking those steps is awesome so yeah. i'm gonna say all my stuff real fast <laughs> um also i wish i could stay for the q a um if you specifically have any questions for me, just find me on social media. I'm at Janina. I will absolutely write back to you. Um, I agree. The thing that I was going to say was that this medium is um, a meritocracy. And you're, it is almost impossible to find that in anything that, al that also has a vanity component to it. And Tom, okay, hold on. I have so many feelings. I have to calm myself down. First thing I'm going to say is that man right there is the best director I've ever worked with in any medium, period, end of story. I have said this in almost any interview I've done since doing Star Wars Battlefront 2 with him. It is because of the diversity of his training and what he asks of you. He suffers no fools and he only works with artists. It, he is lethal. It's incredible. <laughs> it is crazy. It's crazy. Um, he, uh, and I think one, like an example of that, and I hope you speak about it, even if I have to run, is he's about to go do a month um, studying with somebody in New York. He is one of the most sought after directors in performance capture, and he's still carving a month to learn from somebody else. You have to continue to train. The diversity of your training, the diversity of your life experience is what makes you weird enough to <laughs> be an amalgam of things that works on a microphone and behind dots. And I mean, it, it is all of value. You said it, like every single moment before the moment you walk up to that microphone or you put that stuff on yourself, it is of value and you bring it with you and also kind of forget it so you can be the vessel, right? Um, okay, so train, train, train. 
I also want to say when you are in the arena, and I'm going to use you as an example, Miss Deborah, I uh, was really lucky enough to do um, additional voices on The Last Jedi. Um, and like, actually, it was just because I met Matt Wood and he was being really kind and he was like, one, he thought I'd be good for it because he also was like really trying to find one people of color to women it we he knows that he that star wars the galaxy needs more voices in this area um so he invited me to be a part of it and i was terrible and uh mostly because i had never been in an arena like that and i was just like <sighs> this is so cool <laughs> and you were so kind and i was so green you don't remember this at all it's fine it was it was important to me um and and you left such a mark on me, not just with your performance, but how giving you were to somebody who didn't know what the hell they were doing. Um, and I just, and I value that so much. And I'm telling you, you will find people like that in this world because there is a lack of vanity. The first thing you learn when you go to theater school is roll around on the floor and lose that vanity because you cannot put on the skin of somebody else if you hold on to it. Mm. Right? What'd you say? How'd you get your first name Okay, hold on. <laughs> this is it. This is the point. This is thank you, thank you. I just want to be able to say this because because I, I know I'm gonna have to go, so I just want to get all my shit out right now. <laughs> um, and as women, we move to this town and we join quote unquote Hollywood, and to even get hired once, we have to put a modicum of that vanity back on ourselves. My eyebrows are way too tweaked. Like I don't want to have to think about my fucking eyebrows. And I do because I also want to and do work, thank God, in television and film. My experience as an artist in that category is completely different than the freedom that I have being in performance capture and in voiceover. Anyway, and I knew that and I wanted it so badly and I'm also a gamer and I was like, is anyone, I just, does anyone want help? Can I be a PA? Like I didn't, I just didn't know how I was gonna get in and thankfully I, um, I got to audition for Far Cry 4, and um, it was a made-up place between India. Um, basically, it was like the fake Himalayas. Guess what? I'm Indian. Thank you, Jesus. And I had a, you know, like a go-to. Um, I, I was, I basically applied, you know, and um, it was my first experience in motion capture uh, for a AAA game, and I was just, I, I mean, <sighs> it really is a. I am so inspired. I am so inspired by this medium because it's, because it is this beautiful combination between what you learn to do freedom-wise, physicality-wise in theater and the technology is so advanced at this point that you can have really um, subtle, um, just like you can quote unquote do nothing. There were so many times when Tom told me do less. And I was like, are these dots gonna pick this shit up? And he was like, trust me, do less. And he's always right. Obviously he knows what he's getting more than I do if I'm like in the moment or whatever. But, um, but it, is, it is an incredible place to work as an artist. And um, because the technology is constantly changing, it requires us to keep um, training, brushing up, and like just going back to the roots of what it is to be an actor. It really is about like it's being rooted in in um, training and whatever that means to you, you know. It could be it's self training, actual class, blah blah blah. Like all of it is important and quite honestly mandatory. <laughs> <laughs>